I think the village chief Mendez and Ramon Salazar are closely linked as villains. They are thematically linked. They are two sides to the same coin. They are nearly exact opposites of each other. Just look at the two of them. Mendez is the size of four refrigerators stacked on top of each other, and Ramon is the size of an easy-bake toy oven. Mendez wears the dark and simple clothing of a priest, while Ramon wears flamboyant, colorful, aristocratic clothing. Or compare their environment. Mendez is the chief of the village village which is an economically poor rural place, where everything is shabby and dirty and run down. Whereas Ramon is the tyrant of the castle, this luxurious and beautiful environment, where everything is clean and elegant and decorative and expensive. Or compare how the two villains behave, how they interact with their protagonist. Mendez is always right in the thick of things. He fights Leon in person, one on one, face to face. He doesn't hide behind fortifications or high walls or traps or an army of minions. He is the one fighting, he is the one putting himself in danger. Whereas, until his boss fight, Ramon always keeps his person out of reach, behind elaborate defenses, behind an army of expendable soldiers. He makes far more use of traps and tricks. Most of the time he isn't even willing to speak to Leon in person, but instead through a PA system. If I wanted to get really crazy, I could write a whole essay about how class conflict is represented by these two characters. But if we don't think Resident Evil 4 is commentary on class warfare, or that its story is trying to tell us how we should all be dragging the rich out of their mansions and feasting on their pampered flesh, what is the story of Resident Evil 4 doing here? Why such drastic differences between these two settings and characters? Well, Resident Evil 4 is an action horror video game. It's a video game first and the story mostly exists to fuel the horrific and bombastic gameplay. From that perspective, the differences between Chief Mendez and Ramon are important to the horror intention of the gameplay. Horror relies on discomfort. The player needs to feel uncomfortable so the horror can work, for you to feel scared. The antithesis of discomfort is familiarity. The more familiar you are with something, the less scared you will feel. Now let's apply this idea to the setting of a horror video game. At first, the village in Resident Evil 4 feels really creepy and strange. But the more you explore it, the more time you spend in it, the less creepy and strange it will feel. Because you become familiar with it. When players get too familiar with this setting, too comfortable, in order to maintain the sense of horror, the developers need to introduce a totally new setting, something completely unfamiliar, utterly different, and that's where the castle comes in. Resident Evil games always do this. In the first game, you go from this haunted mansion and then down into a crazy research lab. Or in Resident Evil 2, you go from the police station and then down into the sewers and then to another crazy research lab. I think these drastic changes in setting are really important to maintaining the horror across the whole game. Keep throwing players into new, unfamiliar environments. Don't let them get too comfortable with any one setting. And in Resident Evil 4, this dramatic change in environment is accompanied by a dramatic change in villains. Not only are you dealing with a new kind of setting, but are also a totally new kind of antagonist. Chief Mendez and Ramon are so closely linked together in my mind that I considered doing a big video where I did a full analysis of both of them together. But just for the sake of my own sanity, I decided to cut it into two smaller videos instead. So, this video will be focused on Mendez, who is a villain that I actually really like. He's very simple and he doesn't have a ton of character or personality, but for his function within this action horror story, he is perfect. Mendez is this silent, hulking, nigh invulnerable brute, who again and again without any warning just stomps into a scene, wrecks some shit, and then stomps right back out again, without saying a single word. He is terrifying and also kind of completely hilarious. <coughs> Joder, not this guy! Who are you? Just stop right there! He shares a lot of similarities with Mr. X in the Resident Evil 2 remake. Their animations and design are very similar. I wouldn't be surprised if the developers reused assets here. For most of the game, Mendez doesn't even feel like an actual character to me. He doesn't have a personality, he doesn't have any independent motivations. He only does exactly what Sadler tells him without any deviation. Again, just like Mr. X in Resident Evil 2, or another example of a similar character would be the Terminator from the 
first Terminator movie. Mr. X and Terminator both really aren't characters, they're just mindless killing machines. Mendez is a little different, he doesn't just kill. Whereas those other two examples were truly mindless, nothing but machines following orders, Mendez, to me, feels closer to a classic avatar of evil. To explain what I mean, I want to make another comparison that might sound a little crazy at first. Let's look at Calamity Ganon from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, because I think Calamity Ganon and Chief Mendez are similar types of villains. So, in Breath of the Wild, the developers took Ganondorf, a villain who had appeared in many different forms across the series different characters with different powers and different motivations, but who all functioned as a source of destruction in their respective stories. The developers took all those different iterations of Ganondorf, and they condensed them down, concentrated them, distilled them into this being of pure wrath, destruction, and evil, and they called that concentrated being Calamity Ganon. Calamity Ganon is not a character, it is more of a natural disaster. It is humanity's incredible capacity for destruction and evil given mindless form. It has no thoughts, no motivations, no personality. It is an avatar of the collective evil of humanity. In the remake, Mendez feels similar to me, but instead of being an avatar for all the evil of all people everywhere, I think Mendez is an avatar of the Plaga Parasite specifically. He is the Plaga's potential for evil, for destruction, for absolute control, for horror. All of that power condensed, concentrated, and distilled into a single man. That's that's why he doesn't speak, why the writers didn't bother giving him any motivations. He's not a man anymore, he's not a character, he is only an expression of the immense power and terror of the Plaga Parasite. But when Mendez sheds humanity when he reveals his horrific parasitic form, he's actually revealing the true horror, the true power, the true capacity for evil, which is held within the Plaga Parasite. But let's take a step back, because we're getting a little bit crazy here. Resident Evil 4 is an action horror video game, and within that context, Mendez primarily functions as the enforcer for the villain. I'm a big fan of the James Bond films. Basically, every single villain in all of those movies has an enforcer on their team. They're usually some big beefcake who almost never speaks, who has no personality or backstory or motivations. They just do whatever the villain tells them to. They enforce whatever his orders are. They're not really characters, they're just extensions of the villain's will, physical representations of his power. Think of Odd Job in Goldfinger or Mr. Hinks in Spectre. At his most basic level, Mendez is an enforcer archetype, and he's a fantastic one. He's huge, he's menacing, he's scary, he's really tough. In that role, he is perfect. Now let's take a look at the actual story of Mendez within the RE4 remake, because the remake has added a lot more backstory than he had before. There are three files you can find in the game which are labeled as Village Records, two of which you can find in the attic of Mendez's home. These were written by Mendez himself, and they explain his backstory, so let's take a look at all three. The first reads, The Elder entrusted the village to me today. He told me I can learn my duties as I go. I will start by keeping a record of the village. There are still many words I cannot write, but the Elder encourages me. I will do my best. There is a young boy who lives in the cabin by the lake with his grandfather. It seems that his mother was called to heaven upon his birth. His grandfather doesn't talk much, but the lad is very bright and spirited. He told me a story about a knight who rides a donkey again today. The boy's grandfather has fallen ill and his condition worsens every day. The boy worries terribly about him, and there are rumors of a madness among the villagers. As I took my leave, the old man pulled me aside and said, If anything happens, you know what to do. I could only nod in response. It was a terrible night. Everyone stood around the cabin and watched as it burned to the ground. The boy looked on without saying a word. Even as dawn broke, he didn't move a muscle. The next day, he was gone. Here, Mendez is describing his very first day as leader of the village. In this village record, we see a very different Mendez than the mindless enforcer we confront in the game. This is a Mendez who genuinely seems to care about the people of the village. This is a Mendez who is learning, who is perhaps uncertain of himself, but still trying to be better. I think this adds a sense of tragedy to Mendez's story. This caring and thoughtful character we discover through these records is essentially already dead by the start of the game. He was killed by the 
the Plaga Parasite. Mendez's old personality was completely wiped away by the Parasite. He is just another mindless extension of its will now. But once, he was an admirable and worthwhile leader of this village. The boy described in this record is Luis. Soon I will post a video analyzing Luis's story in the remake and we'll discuss that more then. What's important to us here is Mendez's role in Luis's story. Luis's grandfather had been infected by the parasite. When the old man says, if anything happens, you know what to do, he means that if he falls under the sway of what the villagers call a madness, he wants Mendez to kill him. He does not want to live on in that madness, because that wouldn't be a life. And I think Mendez does it. I think he did kill Luis's grandfather, as Luis himself watched on. This adds even more tragedy to Mendez's story. Once a upon a time he was willing to kill to stop the spread of this horrific madness. And in the present day, in his new twisted form, he has become one of the Parasite's most effective tools. We can actually find a photograph of that elder who is mentioned here, the previous leader of the village, in the same attic where you find this file. Here it is. On its back are written the words, Watch over the village in my stead, and may smiles always find you in photographs. Again, there's tragedy here. That elder, who judging by the very sweet note he wrote on this photograph, was a good man who entrusted Mendez with the lives of the villagers. He asked Mendez to protect them, to lead them, and Mendez failed. He failed totally, utterly. Under his leadership, the village has been completely destroyed. The village that this old man asked him to watch over is dead. A dark place filled with nightmares stands in its place, and that is at least partially Mendez's fault. The second village record says, All the men cheered when they heard the boat as it raced across the surface of the water. That magnificent oil will surely help us catch fish easier than before. The ironworks was only built a year ago, but has already merged well with the village. Our sickles and knives shine like never before. The two fish we got from the deal will eat almost anything and are breeding well. The fish farm in the swamp is also making excellent progress. During the day, I teach literacy and mathematics to the children. Every evening, I dine with a single family to hear their grievances and recent gossip, all under the roof of this home we built. Since I opened the village up to the outside, we have prospered and the people are happier. Smiles have even started to appear on their faces. A strange group of black-robed people descended upon the village from the castle and raised an ominous flag with a spider-like insignia upon it. After preaching about salvation and forgiveness, they injected us with something they claim will cure us of madness. Can they be trusted? Mendez's story has come a long way since that last note. You can see how much he has learned and developed in the way that his sentences have become much more complex. Compare how simplistic the sentence structure and vocabulary used in the first village record are compared to this second village record. He has led the village into a sort of golden age. He opened the village up to the outside world, invited industry into the region. He has improved his writing ability and learned mathematics, knowledge which he shares with the village children. He is a proactive and compassionate leader who listens to the concerns of the villagers. In this record, we also see Mendez's great failing. The madness from the first note is still spreading among the villagers. Cultists from the castle promise to heal this madness with an injection. And Mendez, even though he is suspicious of these strangers, allows it to happen. Of course, the cultists injected everyone with the Plaga Parasite sealing their fates. This is very different from Mendez's backstory in the original. In the original game, Mendez was a priest who had been convinced to put aside his faith and worship the Plaga instead, and then preached the holiness of the Plaga to the rest of the villagers, converting them to the cultist's cause. In the remake, Mendez was a genuinely compassionate leader of the village, who was tricked by the cultists into allowing his villagers to be injected with the parasite. In this new version of the story, it was Mendez's naivete and gullibility, his desire to protect the people from the spreading madness, his trust in strangers with ulterior motives that led to his downfall. I do really like this new backstory, firstly because the tragedy of his story adds some much needed pathos to his character. It is very sad to see a genuinely good man transformed into a mindless monster, and secondly because I think it also adds some humanity to the villagers themselves. In the game, all of the villagers are just homicidal crazy zombies. We don't really give it a second thought when we mow them down by the hundreds. But this new backstory gives us a sense of the people they once were, reminds us of their humanity. It's a smart writing choice and one I would have liked to see more of in the game. There is one more village 
strange record, so let's look at it. Date October 10th. The weather has been strange of late. The wheat withers and the cows grow thin. Date December 8th. There are signs of famine. It is true, we lack the means to work the fields, but Lord Sadler's orders are absolute. Date January 30th. 30 people have starved to death. Five cows will be slaughtered. Date March 11th. The patriarchs gather to cast lots. Six more chosen for Lord Sadler. Date April. Eight more today. Date unrecorded. Four more today. Date unrecorded. Eleven more today. Date unrecorded. Two outsiders got lost and wandered into the village. We took them to the altar for the ritual. No need to cast lots today. Even after being injected by the plug after becoming Sadler's puppet, Mendez continued keeping a record of the village, hinting that perhaps a little more of his original personality remains than we had thought. However, just compare the writing style here to that of the last record. Look how simplistic his vocabulary and sentence structure has become. It's even simpler than the first record. We can see how his intellectual capability has degenerated under the parasite's influence. We can also see here how brutal Sadler's reign is, and how little he cares about the people he rules. Those who don't die of starvation are sent to Sadler's research labs to be tortured in horrific experiments. In this final record, we see that even after being transformed, Mendez was still concerned for the lives of the villagers. He writes only of their condition. However, he doesn't care enough to actually protect them from Sadler. That almost saint-like leader from before is gone. Instead of protecting them, Mendez now facilitates their death and torture. It is a pathetic fall from grace for someone who had once been a compassionate man. From here, I want to watch each of Mendez's scenes in the game, and there's really not very many of them to see how the game portrays his character in the present. Here's the first one. That hurts, you know? It seemed like you really wanted to talk. How observant, senor. Now, uh, say, uh, you got a smoke? You know, those things will kill you. Oh, well, maybe just untie me then, huh? Joder! Not this guy! Who are you? Just stop right there! his first appearance, we see what Mendez has become. He's no longer that well-spoken, self-educated, and compassionate leader of the village, who had discussions with a different family every night. He is now little more than a silent automaton, a brute, the mindless hulking enforcer of Sadler's will. He isn't even a character here, he is brute force personified. I do love it when he, without saying a single word, just throws Leon right through a wall. It is brutal. The game does do an excellent job of demonstrating his strength in this scene. He is immediately dangerous. He is presented as a deadly new obstacle for Leon to overcome. Also, I think his new backstory, and the knowledge that he mercy killed Luis's grandfather, does add some interesting subtext to this scene. Before his transformation, Mendez cared about Luis. They could have even been called friends. Now, they are nothing to each other. They don't even interact because Mendez is nothing. Mendez is a brainwashed puppet, and that's at least partially Luis his fault. Luis aided the Illuminatus cult, and look what it has done. On an unrelated note, it's completely hilarious that Leon tries to order Mendez to stop right there. Leon, my dude. Literally everyone in this village has been trying to kill you for the past hour. Why would you hesitate here? Why would you even try to talk to him? Leon, you are so dumb. Anyway, here's Mendez's next scene.
This scene plays out pretty much identically to the previous one. Mendez wanders in, tosses Leon around like a football for a while, and then wanders out again. See you later, dude. At least this time, Leon doesn't hesitate to at least try to defend himself. Once again, the developers are doing a fantastic job of establishing how dangerous Mendez is. He gets shot like 10 times in this scene and doesn't react to a single bullet. His body might as well be made out of titanium. We get his first line in the game, your blood has accepted the gift. He knows that Leon too will soon be a part of their cult, and so doesn't consider him to be a threat at all, which is a terrible mistake. It's interesting to think that Mendez could have killed Leon right here, and then the Illuminatus might have succeeded in taking over the entire world. In a convoluted way, it's the mercy Mendez shows towards an enemy here that leads not only to his own undoing, but the unraveling of the entire cult. I would like to point out that this home is actually Mendez's home. It's clearly the nicest and most sturdy edifice in the entire village. In one of the village's records, Mendez mentions that all the villagers built it together. I think this home, its strength, its comfort, shows us what kind of world Mendez wanted to build for the villagers before the coming of the Illuminados. I think he probably wanted the whole village to look like this house, for every villager to live in a comfortable home like this one, not the filth and the rot and the squalor that has overtaken the village in the time of Sadler's rule. If Sadler had never come, this is what the whole village could have been, a comfortable, sturdy, and safe place to live. It's interesting that Mendez, of all the villagers, is the only one who maintains the neatness and comfort of his home. It sets him apart from everyone else. Let's move on to the next scene. All right, come on. Okay. continues to get his butt totally kicked by this guy, and the developers continue to do a great job of showing how scary Mendez is. We get two more short lines from him, Come Child, and Your Soul Requires Cleansing. I talked about it more in my video on Osmond Sadler, but Resident Evil 4 uses a lot of traditional Catholic imagery and language in its portrayal of the Illuminati's cult, and you can hear that in Mendez's lines right here. This is not unique to Resident Evil 4. A lot of horror across all mediums twists Catholic imagery and language to portray horrific characters and plots. It's probably worth doing a deep dive into sometime. Like, what is the effect of using Catholic imagery in horror? Why do so many horror writers do this? But that's a much bigger discussion than we have time for in this video. I do really like this little section of the game. I always like chase sequences in horror video games. Chases are effective because they're very basic and visceral. Anytime I'm being chased in a horror game, I am totally focused in on that moment. You can't be distracted by anything else while being chased by a monster. Mendez only has one more appearance in the game, so let's watch it. me the strength to crush your enemies. Son of a bitch! Ashley, run! Okay. Pass the way, go. God, I thank you for your gift. You want to get ugly? Let's get ugly. I absolutely love how this scene starts. When Mendes just blasts Leon right through that wall without any warning at all. 
I really enjoy the way every single Mendez appearance starts the same way, with him rocking in unannounced and immediately breaking some stuff. And here we finally see Mendez's true form, discover that he has completely abandoned his humanity. In this monstrous form we see a visual representation of the transformation his personality has undergone. Mendez was once human, educated, ambitious, compassionate, and caring, and now he's just a monster. In the original version of Resident Evil 4, he was always a monster, but in the remake, he is a monster who was once human, a tragic figure. He doesn't truly worship his new god, he doesn't have the intellectual capacity to worship his god, truly. In reality, he has been enslaved by his new god, and because that new god is rotten, the strength it granted him is rotten too and easily crushed by our human hero. His death is a truly pathetic one, a final pitiful cry, his soul so lost that he wastes his last breath begging for help from the man who was responsible for his transformation into a monster, for the total destruction of the village he had once led, and the loss of every single life he had sworn to protect. In the original game, Mendez was just another monster. In this remake, he is an object worthy of pity. Sadly.